Hi guys, this is Shelly Wall. I'm part of the Village Kids core team. And today I'm here with you with Brianne via Zoom, which is a little different than we've done so far. And Brianne Fueling is the head of our counseling department uh, at our church and a certified counselor. So she's gonna talk a little bit about anxiety. So welcome Brianne. Hi, thank you. Thank you for talking with us. Yeah. So what does anxiety normally look like? All right, so I'm going to hopefully post a really helpful video to the link where we post this Zoom call so you guys can maybe watch it yourselves or even share it with your children. It's actually a video that's meant to be shared with children. So I'm going to give a brief overview of what kind of we classically um, categorize anxiety as, and that's kind of three responses. And those three responses would be that when you are feeling attacked or you're feeling like you're in danger or you feeling like you need, you know, something is wrong, you're going to fight, flight, or freeze. And so just to go into those real quickly um, and kind of give a side note, we're going to be talking about, right, like kids and how they're experiencing anxiety during this time. But I want to tell us as adults that if we don't know these things about ourselves mm -hmm. first, we're not going to be able to help our kids in a way that is going to be beneficial to them. And so as I'm talking and as we're kind of chatting back and forth, my heart is that you are thinking about your children. And here's the deal. I think for a lot of us, we know these things about our kids, but we can't necessarily articulate them about our kids. And we haven't necessarily come up with maybe a plan on how to help them with these things. And so my hope and dream from just even this conversation with you, Shelly, and anyone who might listen is that, yes, now we, we don't kind of just sense these things. We actually know them, we've articulated them, and we have a plan for how to help them. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that we have is fights, right? And those are our kids who, like, literally, when they're, like, scared, they're like, yeah, and they're, like, ready. They're, like, intense. They're ready to, like, go to action. You see them, like, fling forward um, if you, like, were to surprise them around the corner. Um, and they are – they're just full of intensity. I mean – I'm not going to throw all my children under the bus, but I mean, everyone has a response, right? And so they're just full of intensity and passion in the way that they respond. They feel like something is wrong. They are going to fight, fight, fight to try to make, get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. The second one is flight. That's someone, if you like scared someone coming around the corner, so maybe that's a good way of figuring all this out. You could just take each of your children, scare them around the corner. Don't do that. Don't say that. Yeah, yeah there's one. Um, and the flight, <laughs> the flight is the people who are going to be like, ah! And then maybe they, like, immediately start crying, and, like, it takes them, like, a long time to come back from that. And then the freeze, um, freezing people are probably my most, um, i trying to think of a good word here. I would, like, my honest thought is, like, they're my most concerning group of people because mm -hmm. an action, uh, like, you know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So we, if they're right. fighting or fighting, there's some kind of motion, and we can get that motion to switch and mm -hmm. go forward in some way. But people who freeze, it's very hard. We need some kind of motion in that. And so these are the kind of people, the kind of kids who the, you don't see a lot of feelings in what they're doing. If you were to jump around the corner, they'd be like, you're like, no, we need to do something. So they don't right. have a lot of feelings, but you begin to hear lots of statements. Statements like, well, I can't believe, or like, why, or like, what makes them do that? And so everything is statement oriented, not feeling oriented. And our job in that kind of situation is to try to help draw out the feelings and trying to like help people respond to that so yeah that's kind of our first little like general category fight flight or freeze okay that's great um so what else can it look like in kids specifically okay so i'm gonna attempt my screen sharing because i i had all this in my mind and <laughs> last night i was like i would just love to give you some helpful visuals that i can also post Maybe like yeah. in the comments of this when we put it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I found that. And so everyone on these beautiful pictures they've created hopefully is quoted here. So let's go to the first one because um, I thought this is super helpful. So I know with each of my kids how it is that they respond to mm -hmm. um, anxiety. And so this first little chart we have here is fantastic. And so here are just some ideas. Um, a lot of kids can respond in anxiety with defiance and misbehavior. I've talked to quite a few parents mm -hmm. in the last few days who are like, home with their kids more and they're like who are these children right like they are misbehaving they're being defiant like I feel like when I'm normally with them like they're not this bad right okay well, that's this that's anxiety coming out in their little child heart to be able to try to take control of what they can take control of whether that's TV time whether that's telling you what to do whether that's doing whatever it is that's anxiety coming out it's defiance and misbehavior 
Mm-hmm. Inattention. This has been a big one in our house. I feel like I've never had to say directions this many times ever in my entire ever loving life. And so um, inattention is a big one. Lack of focus, slipping mm-hmm. grades. Like, and I, like, there's not able to figure out. I think for, in our house, it's been like, wait, what did you ask me to do? What, 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 what is going on? Um, a need mm-hmm. for control and over planning. This has been another one. I think maybe all these have been a big thing in our house. We'll see how the how the list keeps going. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Same thing we did yesterday, right? Like, um, so like just trying to plan all these little things, trying to take control, trying to know what's coming ahead. Um, I would put that with and down in the corner is excess, excessive question asking. I got to like yeah. day three of this and I thought I can't handle any more questions when I'm in a crisis mm-hmm. on myself, right? Like trying to figure out like how to keep all these things afloat. The question, mm-hmm. like their bodies, like, you know, like coming at me and like being on me at all times, just asking thousands of questions. And I was like, this is anxiety. This is their anxiety, right? They're just going to ask questions. They're trying to figure out what they can figure out. They're trying to have control that they can control, and it's real. Physical symptoms. Okay, this one is huge. And so I, I can get on a whole other soapbox about physical symptoms and psychosomatic complaints in children when it comes to anxiety that I will try not to get on right now. Um, but that I did put this one, this little chart right here, too. Right. I think a lot of times parents are like, oh, they can't have this kind of food or they can't have that kind of food because it makes them feel sick. Now, hear me that I think that food intolerances are, like, preyed upon by anxiety, and they exaggerate okay. that and make it, like, a lot mm-hmm. worse. So that's mm-hmm. a little bit thing. But just, like, stress and anxiety makes heart problems or breathing problems or any kind of thing, some problems work. The same thing in kids, right? And so here's just a helpful little chart and what that can look like. Mm-hmm. Big, big, biggest things are stomach aches and headaches. And then I'll put this chart on there, too. People can look at that. But biggest things are stomach aches and headaches. And they come at bed, and they come when they're trying to think, they're trying to calm their body down, and all their feelings have not been dealt with during the day. And so there they are, all all are, um, just in their body, waiting to be processed. Mm -hmm. Seeking validation, anger and frustration, avoidance, sleep issues, big one. Negative Nelly, big one also, right? Like they just are seeing this um, through a negative lens. And so these are just kind of the two things. We'll post these. You guys can read about them more. Um, but mm-hmm. just definitely looking at these things. This is how it shows up in children. It's the same in adults mm-hmm. to a lot of degree, right? Um, oh. But in children, for sure, these are just big ones that mm-hmm. they're not so obvious all the time. And so we have to be mm-hmm. very careful that we have eyes that are seeing them for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. So why is it important for us as parents to understand all of this? Well, I think a uh, mm, Again, we could talk about this for a good 60 minutes. So here's the fast version that I can give you. Right. Is that all throughout the scriptures, we see that anxiety is a huge topic um, in relation to the gospel. And so, um, and that peace, right, is the promise that we have Mm -hmm. to fight off anxiety. And so when we are seeing that our children are anxious, Mm -hmm. it is a disservice to them to not teach them what they're feeling, right, and Mm -hmm. kind of go at that subject because the gospel and the power of Jesus has the full capability of entering into that space to actually bring healing and to bring peace. And one of the Mm -hmm. things that I love about working with children is that they're incredibly resilient. I hear parents all the time tell me things like, oh, they're never going to come back from that or they're going to have such a hard time with that for the rest of their life. And here's here's the secret, probably Mm -hmm. not. And so kids are extremely resilient. They're actually extremely positive in the way that they generally take information in. Mm -hmm. Where it gets stuck is when they're not able to process things. And so if they're going to be spending these couple of weeks just having all this anxiety and feeling it and feeling it and feeling it and not having an opportunity to talk about it and process it and think through it and have it called out and have the gospel brought into it, that is going to be what could potentially be hard and be a little traumatizing, right, as they grow up. But if they're able to talk about this, if they're able to see that Jesus is with them, if they're able to talk about through all these different elements um, that we know from anxiety, which right now I'm just thinking about how many different tools we can continue to talk about um, bringing that in. But that is that is probably my greatest heart is that um, they don't kids don't have to stay in this. They can absolutely move through it. Anxiety is not something that we have to stay in. For some people, it's going to be like a continual struggle. Um, but it is not something that we are called, and the Bible gives us any idea 
that we have to just sit in for for forever, right? Like it is something that we can make motion to work through and to grow from. So, yeah. So how can we help kids untangle anxiety? So I think there's quite a few ideas that I have. And so I'm going to try to just rush through them here. The first one is, I think, um, even doing, I'm a huge art therapy person for children. And so one of the biggest things that we can sometimes help children do is just take a crayon to a piece of paper and so even if you just begin by helping them draw kind of like a tangly mess of what maybe their brain looks like or what their heart looks like, right? Like literally taking different colors and figuring out what that is and what this looks like. And then beginning to assign. This is one of the things that I keep thinking through my head. This is one of the things I keep thinking in my head. And so you're mm-hmm. giving them a space on paper with colors and words um, to just try to figure out, like, what are some of those thoughts that keep coming through your head and are playing again and again and again um, or are growing or they're the things that you're thinking about before you go to bed? Um, and so for a lot of kids, they don't know how to, like, I mean, this is just general developmental, emotional, psychosocial development. They don't know how to think about their thinking, right? And so right. as parents and as educators, that's one of our jobs is to help them learn how to think about their thinking, how to think about their feeling, right? So that feelings are not just things that come over them. Feelings are super valid, beautiful things. Mm -hmm. Feelings are not thoughts. And if we just feel, that can lead to our destruction very quickly. Feelings have to be coupled with thoughts. And so that would be probably one of the biggest things is that we begin to even just give them space and encouragement to think about their feelings and to put them down on paper and to work through them. Um, I, I just I have a couple of um, other pictures I'm going to show you in a second, but my biggest encouragement is mm-hmm. get your children out in the sunshine. So if it's okay. cold, you sit them by a window. But honestly, like bundle them up and get them outside. So sunshine and vitamin D, which a study came out this morning saying that um, vitamin D is actually one of the things they're finding most helpful against fighting against the coronavirus. Um, so, hey, all these positive things, right? right. Um, right. Vitamin D and getting your children out in the sunshine is one of the biggest boosts to their emotional framework and their cognitive framework. And so getting them out in the sunshine um, and getting them active, that is going to be the biggest thing. And so my children, um, they're not, they have not watched a lot of TV in the last couple of days, um, mm-hmm. mostly because we're working in the spaces where the TVs are. Um, but honestly, we are just chucking them out the doors constantly. And one of the things I, I know, I, I know um, Meredith Hale has said this too, is like you, you go through a 20 to 30 minute period where you check your children outside the door and they're like, oh, what am I going to do? And it's just kind of torture for everyone. But if you can get over that hump, it's like their brain engages with outside world and all of a sudden they're making thick boards and they are doing all sorts of creative things. Um, um, and I would say no sugar, trying to cut down on the amount of sugar that our children are having. Sugar is so anxiety connected. Um, mm-hmm. Try to get regular sleep and get lots of sleep. And so the way our general school system and life is set up is that we don't get a lot of sleep that our children actually need to grow. So this is a great time to be able to um, be getting extra sleep in and getting mm-hmm. lots of sleep. And then a um, couple other ideas that I just wanted to share here, and I'll post these so I won't talk about them entirely. Um, this is a great – again, I went to look for, like, resources where I was like, ah, give me a pretty picture that someone already made with some of the things that I was thinking about. Um, and these are great ones. And so the biggest thing on here I want to call out is to respect and validate your child's feelings. So no matter what it is that they are feeling, that they share, that they put down on that paper – Please do not tell them, like, even that it's going to be okay or that um, they don't need to be feeling that way. But really try to empathize with it to be able to be like, that would be hard. Man, if I had that thought going through my mind again and again and again, I could see that would make me feel really scared too, right? So you're not trying to judge it necessarily at first. You're not trying to correct it. The first thing I need for us to do is to be able to just empathize with it, right? And to be able to be like, yeah, if that was true, I could see what that would get me down to. Then we come into kind of trying to build a grid into their mind as to what is true and what is not true. And so I think the other thing that I have on here is, um, uh, let's see, this number six, which is give up the idea of mental health days, skip days, or sleep with mom nights, or other avoiding fear situations. This is an amazing time that we have in our life to not um, become, like, codependent in our children's anxiety but to really help them to embrace it and to work through it. And so when we do all these kind of like coddling behaviors, we're not, we're not respecting that their brains and their emotions can actually work through things when they can. 
And so this is a amazing time to help children work through things rather than just having to sit in things when sometimes like our daily schedules like are hard to give it that amount of time mm -hmm. and then i think oh look i'm getting text messages um and then i think the other thing too is that um the big right here these are just things to say to your anxious child and i love this right so besides checking them out in the sunshine and getting our sleep these are just some things that are amazing tools to be able to say to our kids Mm -hmm. And so, um, and we'll post that too, so people can look at that more. Great. Thank you. Um, in what that looks like. Um, so, are there any tools uh, that parents can be using in the next couple weeks? Yeah. So, I think those ones that we talked about, and I think getting them out in the sunshine. But I think we have a great opportunity. Um, I know, I know, for so many of us who are like so working, it is so hard right now to figure out how to work and parent and homeschool and cook all your meals and keep your house clean when there's people that stand up all day long. And so um, I, I would encourage us, which I am, like, preaching to myself here, right. um, to figure out how it is that we can focus on these emotional aspects probably right. first, um, and that the tools that we have are really sitting down, giving them space to talk. I think mm -hmm. not, not sitting down, I didn't actually mean that, because I think the best thing, like, the best conversations I have with my kids are when we're on walks, when I'm like, hey, so what are you feeling? Are you feeling sad? Are you mm -hmm. scared? Um, we have this emotions chart that we use, we uh, copy for everyone in Moms Alive, and there's all sorts of ones that are available on Pinterest like that for free, checking in with your kids, having them pick how they're feeling, and just every now and then, right, like trying to check in with them and see what they're doing, what they're feeling. And so I think the biggest mm -hmm. tools are check-ins and the things that we've already talked about also. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brianne, for talking with us and giving us some ways and some information that we can help our kids deal with anxiety so yeah appreciate it. thank you yes and i'm excited to see how our kids grow throughout this time and um what they experience and what the lord uses um this time to kind of grow in them i think we have an opportunity to grow our kids with a lot of grit so i think that's pretty exciting yep awesome. all right thank you all right thank you bye